April 8, 2021. Israel's Holocaust Remembrance Day began Wednesday night under the banner until the very last Jew, 80 years since the onset of mass annihilation, marking eight decades since the start of the mass extermination of Jews at the hands of the Nazis and their allies. Memorial events got underway with an official ceremony held at the Yad Vashem Holocaust Remembrance Center in Jerusalem. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and President Reuven Rivlin both spoke at the Jerusalem ceremony. To walk with you on the paths of remembrance leading from Holocaust to resurrection, I bow my head before you. I will forever carry in my heart your unforgettable testimonies. I will soon part with my official role as president, but I will not part with my commitment as a human being, as a Jew, as an Israeli, to remember and to remind and to educate in light of the values that you have instilled in us. A Chinese aircraft carrier and its escorts were conducting maneuvers around Taiwan, China's military said in a statement this past Monday. Chinese aircraft carriers sailed through the Miyako Strait near Okinawa. Meanwhile, at least 10 People's Liberation Army warplanes and an anti-submarine warfare aircraft entered Taiwan's self-declared air defense identification zone. Uh, our defense ministry is very determined in defending ourselves. Uh, we are willing to defend ourselves and is without any question. And we will fight the war if we need to fight the war. And if we need to, uh, you know, to defend ourselves to the very last day, we will defend ourselves to the very last day. Uh, in support of longstanding U.S. policy, uh, again, as reflected uh, in the Taiwan Relations Act, uh, the United States maintains the capacity to resist to, to resist any resort to force or other forms of coercion that would jeopardize the security or the social or economic system of the people on Taiwan. Israel notified the U.S. that it's responsible for Tuesday's attack on the Iranian cargo ship affiliated with the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. A spokesperson for the Iranian Foreign Ministry confirmed on Wednesday that the Saviz was lightly damaged in the Red Sea off the coast of Djibouti at about 6 a.m. on Tuesday due to an explosion. The American official who talked to Israeli diplomats said the Israelis had called the attack a retaliation for earlier Iranian strikes on Israeli vessels. President Joe Biden is expected to unveil a long-awaited package of executive actions to curb gun violence Thursday at the White House. The announcement comes nearly three months into Biden's term in office, a delay that had frustrated activists who wanted the president to fulfill a campaign pledge to take action on gun violence on his first day in office. That frustration only grew after a slate of mass shootings in Colorado, Georgia, and California. Biden will direct the administration to begin the process of requiring buyers of so-called ghost guns, homemade or makeshift firearms that lack serial numbers, to undergo background checks. I don't need to wait another minute, let alone an hour, to take common sense steps a highly infectious variant of the coronavirus that was first identified in Britain has now become the most common source of the new infections in the United States, the director of the CDC said Wednesday. Federal health officials said in January that the B117 variant, which began surging in Britain in December and has since slammed Europe, could become the dominant source of coronavirus infections in the U.S. Andrew Giuliani, a former top aide to President Donald Trump and son of Rudy Giuliani, is heavily considering a bid for governor of New York in 2022, potentially setting up an epic clash between two of the biggest political families in recent New York history. A Giuliani-Cuomo race would be a titanic battle of New York families, a liberal conservative fight that the state hasn't seen in years. 